Hey guys, Dan here, and welcome back to Forza Motorsport 5. Um, yeah, it's been a, like a few days, I think, since I played this. I finished off Need for Speed Rivals, and we are back in Forza. Now, I'm going to make a mention of something. Someone said I'm pronouncing Forza wrong. No, I'm not. I was like, it's Forza. No, it isn't. It's Italian word, and it's pronounced Forza. You know what I mean? Like pizza. But... I guess Americans are always right, aren't they? It's Forza. Ta, ta, ta. Not Forza. Fuck. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, we have one more championship series in the Sport RT, and then we're basically going to move on to Grand Touring. Now, a lot of people are like, Dan, please just do exotic, do exotic. Everything's going to get done, I promise. I can't even afford the modern hypercar right now. They're too expensive. Uh, I can afford... The Ultimate Grand Touring and Timeless Supercar, like obviously you see the Ferrari F40 right there. And this is the F, the, this Ultimate Grand Touring, that's the F12 Berlinetta. But, uh, I'd like to work my way up there, get enough money and save up, you know what I'm saying? And right now, if I do this, I have the classic, uh, I have classic, uh, what do you call it? Uh, muscle. Muscle Revival. And then I have Grand Touring. And Grand Touring is affordable vehicles, as you can see, I can afford those cars. But I figured I'd let you know that. Okay. <laughs> so let's go back into Sport RT. And let's let's wrap this thing off. Let's wrap up RT. Uh, and we'll do American Muscle Revival. Muscle cars were once engineered to make ordinary cars go faster. Like men once went to the gym to make themselves go faster. These days, men who spend time in the gym and those shops where they sell milkshakes that make you look like Arnold Schwarzenegger are not doing it because they want to be better at sports, are they? They're doing it because they want their clothes to look too small for them. <laughs> These muscle cars are more like modern muscle men, bulging in all the right places, but not necessarily any more sporting. The legendary Buick Regal GNX was at least NASCAR derived and McLaren engineered but that didn't stop it having some interesting habits when driven hard. The 1993 Ford Mustang SVT Cobra, meanwhile, was a last ditch attempt to bolt on some credibility and some speed to the generally forgettable third generation Mustang. Yeah, it's I'm very not forgettable. The cars are slow, they're not. Or unexciting, they're not. It's just that, like that man with the power shake, they may be a bit embarrassing to be seen out with. I understand that for sure. <laughs> I love that. He hits it right on the head. So we've got the Camaro IROC-Z, the Ford SVT Cobra uh, R from 93, the 2000 SVT Cobra R, the Buick Regal GNX from 87, the 2002 Camaro 35th Anniversary SS, 1995 Cobra R, and the Firebird Trans Am GTA. That's a DLC car. All right. Alright, so what should we weigh the options off of? Let's take a gander. This is pretty fast. Just kind of look in here. Alright, you know what? We'll build it off of the 2000 Cobra, okay? Where's my phone? We'll build it off of that, and we'll go from there, and we'll pick the best, okay? That's how I roll. Anyway, uh, notes. Get rid of all these numbers. All right, so we're starting it off. 6.8. Uh, four point eight. I'm going to try and hurry up when choosing a car now, but I like looking at them and weighing the options. 7.8, 7.9. As well as five dead. Okay, oops, I put six. 5.0. All right, so if we go down to the Camaro from 1990, not as fast. Handling's a little bit better on the Camaro. Acceleration isn't as good. Launch is a tiny bit better, and braking is a little better. Okay, that's what we're dealing with with that. The 93 Cobra, slower, better handling. Acceleration is not as good. Launch is better. Braking is better. So these two cars are very similar. Except this thing's acceleration is better than this one's. So yeah, there's various things you gotta look at. Alright, the Regal, it's not that, not as slow. Alright, sorry, it's a little slower. Handling's not as good. 
Acceleration's a teensy width better. Launch is the same. Braking isn't as good. That, that vehicle is out. The Camaro SS from 02. Um, speed is close, but not the same. Handling is not as good. Oh, it's a little bit better, sorry. Acceleration's identical. Launch is better. Braking is better. This isn't a bad choice either. We also have the 95 Cobra, uh, which we're dealing with. 6.2, not as fast. Handling is a teensy bit better. Acceleration's a bit worse. Launch is a little better. Braking's a little better. And the Trans Am, 6.5, not as good. Handling, better. Acceleration, not as good. Launch, better. Braking, better. So they're pretty much all roughly the same, but I think I'm gonna go with the 2000 SVT Cobra R, okay? That's my vehicle of choice. Let's see what kind of liveries we got for this bad boy. Hideous, hideous. I like that one. I like its traditional uh, Mustang style with the with stripes. No, no, not bad. That's more for a Japanese car, though. Oh my god. That's kind of cool, but I'm not sure if I take it. Uh, no. Too bland. No. Not bad. I like that as well. Ooh, that's nice, actually. Um, that's not bad either. That's okay. No. Mm, not bad. But you know what? I'm going to go with the, the black with white stripe. I like that. Looks good to me, baby. All right, let's do it. And how much is this fucking car? I'm gonna use a hundred tokens to buy it. The idea is to save up for that hyper car. <laughs> I am making more money, obviously, but. This is your 2000 Ford SVT Cobra R. Oh, thanks. Here we go, we got eight races in this one. Today, we head to another event at the historic Indianapolis Motor Speedway, home to some of the world's biggest auto races for over a hundred years. Now, for a second, when it said muscle revival, I thought it was going to be like old muscle cars, like old Camaros and old... But I guess it's muscle revival, not, not classic muscle. It's when they were trying to, like muscle, muscle cars went out of, out of style, let's just say. And uh, I guess they tried to bring them back with these cars. They went away again and they tried, and they brought them back for the late 2000s. You know, with the current Camaros and uh, Challengers, Chargers, you know, they brought them all back. They're very popular. Believe it or not, they're assembled in Canada, all of them. Saying, oh fuck me! Sorry. When I I was drinking my coffee, when I pulled it back a bit, like you know, I guess I didn't finish swallowing it. So, sorry. Just give me a minute. I had some dribble on on my seat here. Just gonna... okay. I think we're good. Alrighty. Let's do it up, baby. Start the race. All right, Cobra, let's see what we got. I think this is my first Mustang in this game so far. I wanted to take the Mustang before, but I never did. That wing does look ridiculous. But oh, you see the top, see the wheel, what the fuck? No! Oh my god. When I was bored the other day, I looked up some of the hardcore racing sim stuff. And, uh... You can get like a full set out like 
seat with a clutch and a gear and like a and a shifter and steering wheel interchangeable parts. It's crazy. That would be a lot more fun. And if I had one of those and it was a direct simulation, I'd probably be a lot better at this because I'm actually good at driving. I'm a good driver. I'm not even just saying that. Like real life driving, I got the skills. I'm pretty sure I'd be pretty good. Overtake the Camaro. Oh, no. Him and his American flag. Crap. I didn't like the Camaros from the 90s and early 2000s. They looked ugly as fuck, in my opinion. A lot of cars from the 90s didn't look too good. A few did. The McLaren F1. That was a beautiful car, in my opinion. Two top of the leaderboards. Oh, past the Camaro. See ya! And past the 93 Ford. I swear to God, I did have one of those. Mine looked exactly like that, except it wasn't a Cobra. It was just a Mustang LX. First car ever. It's a piece of shit. <laughs> it was so slow. I swear to God, it must have had a four cylinder engine. And, uh, hey! Had a four cylinder engine, that's it. It was so fucking slow. <laughs> Got in a wreck with it, not my fault. The guy, like, cut in front of me. Ended up getting, like, I think it was over three grand for the car, even though I spent four on it. I thought it was funny how that worked out. good. Still got one more lap on top of this one. I gotta say though, this racing isn't exactly exciting. It does make a growl though, doesn't it? The car feels kind of like a heavy tank. A little bit, it's a little, it's quite heavy. There we go. First race in the trenches.
Okay, beautiful. Okay. I did reach level... Wait, what? I did reach level one. Okay. We now head back to the Top Gear test track. Designed by Lotus to be a true test of a car's ability. Sweet. Oh. What are we doing here, I wonder? I didn't see if it was the full top gear or if it was just like the circle or... I knew it was bowling. I knew it. I'm like, it's gonna be Top Gear Bowling. That's all we played on Top Gear's track lately. You know what's funny about this? Every time I play this game, I watch a few, like six episodes of Top Gear. Well, not that many. That's quite a few. <laughs> I watch like two to three episodes of Top Gear after I'm done a session of this. I love that show, man. It's, look at the wheel. It's all fucked up. <laughs> it's a great show. I love it. No! I'm trying to drift it because you get more points that way. If you, you hit more with your car. I didn't hit Jack with that one. Very good. No! This is where the money comes in. Oh my, my racing line's all fucked up. I just gotta get a hundred, two hundred thousand. I'll get it here. That'll do. It's fine. It's got the gold. Alrighty, six left. Where are we off to now? Spa Francorchamps. That's a guess. I'm guessing Spa Francorchamps. We return to Mazda oh. <laughs> Raceway Laguna Seca wrong. in California and its famous corkscrew at Turn Eight, oh. one of the world's most challenging corners. I wonder how the Stang is going to take that corner. The Mazda Raceway. Look at that view, though. I'm surprised it doesn't show um, the corkscrew on there. All right, you're going to see nothing but stangs in this event. Let's do it up, baby girl. <laughs> It's so weird when it does that. Hey! Hey, 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 hey! Get, get the, get the... Look at this guy pushing me off! 
must have found out that I'm a Canadian driving an American car and he lost his shit. <laughs> like, no. No! Look, I got a Shelby. I got a Shelby, like an 05 Shelby to deal with here. That is totally a fair, fair play. Get out of my way! Woo! Look at that classic one right there. Old GT500, that's nice. Why are you, oh no! Okay, no, that has to be redone. You can't corner cut on sand. It just does not work that way. I tried to sneak it on the inside, big mistake. So we'll sneak on the outside, haha. <laughs> Coming up to the corkscrew. All of it has the airbag thing right above my head on my uh, sun visor. That's hilarious. Get the fuck out of the way, man. Oh, look at this guy coming on the inside. I gotta advance, bro. I'm in I, I just got kicked back into fucking third or goal or bronze medal position. Oh, he's got a fish tail me. You know what's funny about that uh, early to mid 90s, like the third generation Mustang that, that's back there that I had, that I owned? It was the most popular Mustang. I'm not kidding. It sold the best. Probably because it was very affordable. That's probably why. And because it said Mustang on it, everyone wanted one. I gotta advance, I gotta pass these two knuckleheads. Ah, rear wheel drive, keep it. Wait, where did I pass, where did I pass him? I gotta advance one spot. Come on, SPT. 